be the right club today. Yes! All right, welcome back to the bench. Here we go, we're gonna get started. So this is our project piece that we're working on. This is a Ping A-Blade. You can see here, it's got some nice wear and tear on it, right? These old Pings, you can pick them up on eBay, like I said, 10, 15 bucks. Um, get them pretty cheap and you can make them look pretty damn good. But looking at this, we've got some surface stuff going on here. Um, all of this is just corrosion. It's nothing that's gonna impact the performance of the blade. But with Ping, the toughest two of the challenges with Pings is one, getting this pocket cleaned out. And two, removing it from the head, removing the shaft from the head. Ping loves to make this hard, especially on their old putters. But if we do it right and you follow, you're gonna end up with this finish. And you can see, we can probably see the camera in this. Yeah, there it is right there. You can see the camera. We want to talk about initial cleaning. So I've got two that we're working on right here. We've got an answer three and then an answer one. Now both of these were pre-cleaned and when I pre-cleaned, I soak them. Now people use Coke, they use vinegar, Alka-Seltzer, uh, whatever, just to get that initial grime off of the club. And guys, this stuff really works. So. Some people say soak it for five hours, so soak it overnight, soak it for two days. Here's the difference. So this one here, this answer three, was soaked in just vinegar and I sprinkled a little baking soda in there so it got a little bit of an effervescence action to kind of work inside of this stuff. So this was soaked for six hours, okay? You can see this inside and this is the hardest part this is what you got to focus on this inside looks really good the patina looks really good okay we're very close on this one this one was soaked for 24 hours if we're looking at them side by side and specifically focusing on the inside right this is what this is the hardest part you can see this one down here is a little bit cleaner in the corners than this one. So I would say a 24 hour soak is your best way to go. Just to put this in perspective, what it looked like, and all of them are gonna look like this before, that's the A blade here is pre-soak, this is post-soak. So let's get into how are we gonna clean these up. Okay, so the first step in this process here is I like to use my 1x30 belt sander. Now I have a 3M pad on here. This is, I'm going to say a 120 grit, so not very aggressive at all. Um, you'll find that, especially with these cheap belt sanders, the first time you put them in they're going to be really stiff and you may get like a stall out, like they won't go. So what I found I do is I soak these in water for about 20 minutes and then when I take them out of the water I will just kind of get them and work them like this to soften them up a little bit and that will get them to stop stalling. So you can absolutely do this by hand with a 3M pad. All we're doing is we're just going to give this a nice little once over to get some of the uh, imperfections out of this. You can see after the soaking this is actually cleaned up very nicely in here and on the front. Remember we had that pitting, not so much now. It's, uh, it's nice and smooth. So we'll hit this on the belt sander. I'll show you what it, the difference looks like. So this is kind of where we're at now. All right, so just after that very little bit, you can see how this has really come to life. That's what it looks like before, and then our after. All right, so just after maybe five minutes of polishing, you can see already what a difference that made. Um, you're not gonna be able to get all the spots here, and that's fine. We're going for the big areas that you can easily access. Now we're gonna go into 
the detailed parts. And at this point, we're gonna go with the good old fashioned Dremel. So I like the wire brushes here. You can, I'll use a variety of wire brushes depending on where I'm gonna go. The only thing with the Dremel is make sure that, you know, you don't want metal hitting metal. You're gonna make more scratches. You don't wanna do any of that. So go slow, take your time. I uh, have an attachment on my Dremel that I use here. I think it was 30 bucks or so. It makes this detail work much, much easier. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on this inside here. So I'm gonna use my small tip that I know will get in those corners. All right, so I don't know, maybe three minutes with the Dremel, with that piece there and we are looking real nice now you have to have a certain level of expectation with this okay um, these putters are old so there are certain areas that you are just not gonna be able to get super smooth right this is aging we got most of it out um, the rest of that is just pitting that you're not gonna be able to do uh, without a professional you know sandblasting or something like that but for this function and what we're just trying to do is just bring it back. Um, we're just about done. The last step in this is we're gonna put this on our polishing wheel and we're gonna polish out all of the, um, basically what we used for the 3M pad. But what I like to do also, since that polishing pad will not get in the areas we wanna get in, I will use the Dremel and we'll get some compound I like using the blue compound you can use a black or a white um, the black is a little bit more aggressive right now we're not trying to uh, take out any marks we don't really have any deep etches or anything like that where we need to worry about so a simple blue will be fine grab a rag we'll just give it a little Look, see here, pretty daggone good. So let's hit it up on the wheel. All right, so our wheel here, we've got two wheels. We have this a little bit more aggressive, tighter knit wheel, both the cloth, and then we have a denim wheel here that we'll use for a final polish. Again, I go with the blue compound on this, it's more than enough. We'll start with here, we'll do the whole thing as much as we can, right? We're gonna, gonna, some parts we may not be able to hit, just make sure you're paying attention. If you have a long spindle, even better. And this is why I like taking the shaft off, because this is much easier to handle this way. All right, so that's our first one here. You guys can see it's uh we're getting there right it's not going to look super clean right that polish is still on here so if we go ahead and rub off some of that polish you can start to really see where we're at but this is the one that's going to make the difference so five minutes on there you guys probably can't tell yet so let's take you over to the bench and clean it up. All right, and here we are. So pretty dang good looking. Um, now, if you wanted to look at the different stages, obviously we've got a couple different club heads here, but here's where we started with that guy. Then after our soak and our 3M, we went to here can see the difference pretty much instantly and then after our heavy polish we went to here big difference so not a lot of work but you can get a lot out of it if you guys want to know how to do some of this custom engraving embellishments Stay tuned because we will go over that because it's really not as hard as you think. And then just go ahead with a little epoxy and epoxy it back together. Let it sit and you're good to go. 
and you're all done. So until next time, make sure that you swing as hard as you possibly can, just in case you hit the ball. G2 out.